What's up guys, welcome back. So today we're talking gears and specifically gear upgrades for your standard Dana 44 axles. Uh, when I say standard Dana 44, I'm talking your low pinion axles, um, mostly uh, anything older than like, you know, the early 90s. This will work in TJs as well. If you've got a TJ with a 44, this is gonna be an option for you um, and it's really not all that complicated to do this upgrade. So I, I first want to give a shout out to Carl Jantz at Jantz Engineering. That's J-A-N-T-Z Engineering. Uh, he's the guy who did all the R&D on this. He came up with JK Gears NA Dan Older Style Dana 44. It's called the K4 or Jana K4 kit. He also has a Jana 54 kit which is putting dana 50 gears and i in the older high pinion 44s dana 70 gears and the dana 60 so on and uh so on and so forth so check him out youtube go to his website buy this stuff it is awesome it will make life so much it will give you a lot more peace of mind of what's going on um in the parts and pieces that you don't normally see so what i want to do is just go over some measurables why why are we doing this sort of upgrade? Number one, most guys now seem to be wanting to run, you know, 30, at minimum 35s, but 37 seems to be the small tire now almost, up to 40s. They're putting a ton of horsepower. And one of the things that guys don't really understand is if you're going to go and upgrade to, say, one-ton axles or really crazy trick out your axles, that can be upwards of ten, twelve thousand dollars. Now, don't get me wrong. You want to call me up and say, Dylan, I want you to build me a set of one tons to fit under my CJ. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll 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 build what you want. But I also want to give you guys options to upgrade what you have or build something that maybe doesn't seem quite as strong, but we can build it internally just as strong as those one tons, uh, in my opinion, and, and do it in a way that you keep better ground clearance, um, it's more serviceable, um, and honestly, I just think it's a little bit cooler to be able to do this stuff because uh, guys are going to look at your Jeep and go, oh, you just have some little half-ton axles in there, and it's like, yeah, but they're way beefed up. So um, let's just start by doing some comparisons here. So the first thing I want you guys to focus on is these three right here. So this is a Dana 44, standard um this is going to be your old style eight and a half inch ring gear uh old style ring and pinions that you're going to find in old cjs and scouts and just chevys dodges all that stuff okay and then this is your modern jk dana 44 rear and that's one thing you got to focus on here guys the rubicon 44 front stuff will not work with this uh, the pinions on the Rubicon fronts are actually shorter, so you're going to have to kind of brush that aside for right now. But this is JK, Rubicon, uh, or just standard 44. And then we're going to go to a Dana 60. Now, all these three gear sets are 410. Why did I want 410? Why did I pick 410? Um, because when I measured everything out, I wanted it to be for the same gear ratio because when you start to change gear ratios... Your pinion head size can change. There's certain things that can change. So I wanted this to all be the same. Now, when I say, oh, well, things can change when you change your gear ratio, what do I mean? Well, here's another Dana 44 gear set. This is a high pinion Dana 44 gear set, but it'll, you know, you'll, you guys will understand what I'm talking about here is, okay, this, this one right here on the right side, this is 410. This right here is 354. Now, what do you see? Well, this pinion is a lot bigger than this one because as you go numerically lower or technically higher in gear ratio, 354, 331s, 307s, and so on, this pinion is going to get larger, okay? But as you go to a quote-unquote lower gear ratio or a higher numerical value, this pinion starts to shrink. And we'll actually see this here too, here is a, here's the 410 Dana 60, okay? And here is a 488 Dana 60. So as you can see, this pinion 
starts to get a little bit smaller. So I just wanted to show you guys that so, so you understand why I'm doing or why I'm going about it the way I'm doing it. So we move this guy to the side. Let's just focus on these three. So when we're dealing with the old style Dana 44s, a lot of guys will say there's two real issues, U-joints and the pinion. The pinion being the, the weak point. Now you can remedy the U-joint problem and the axle shaft problem by just going chromoly. Um, honestly, I think that makes a ton of sense if you're going to end up doing something like this. Now, if you go to chromoly, now you really have one weak point, and that is the pinion. Now, when I say weak point, if you guys are out there running 31s, 33s, even 35s on the old style Dana 44s, you're probably going to be okay. I'm not telling you you have to do this. I just think it's a, it's a good option to have if you want to go to something like it. Now, when we say weak point, why do I call this the weak point? Well, I have another pinion right here. Actually, I'll grab this one too. I have two other pinions right here. Okay, this one right here is a Dana, 40, uh, Dana 30 410, and this right here is a Dana 27 410. Now, as you can see, when you look at the pinion head size, obviously the 44 is larger. Um, the 27 is actually almost as big as the, uh, as the 30. But when we're talking about strength, one of the things you're going to notice is your splines in your outer journal on all three of these, and this is a fine spline 27, Dana 27, all these are exactly the same. And all of these, 27, 30, standard 44, take the same outer pinion bearing. Now, when you, it's like, okay, well, that's not the greatest thing, but okay, whatever. Now you want to look at this inner journal, well, darn it, if you look and mic out all these, they are the exact same dimension. So technically speaking, outside of the ring gear being larger, um, a Dana 30 being seven and a half inch diameter, that's the only real difference between a 44 and a 30 because your pinions are relatively exactly the same. Same spline, same thread, same journal size, all of it. So that's why we look at going to the JK style. So when you're comparing Dana 44 to JK, and let's just stay right here, as you can see, whether it's ring gear diameter, pinion gear diameter, and when I'm talking pinion gear diameter, I'm talking about from the out, outer tip of each gear, right? Side to side. That's what I'm talking about in pinion gear diameter. And then when I'm talking about, when you see ring gear surface, I'm talking about from the toe to the heel of the ring gear, how much surface is there lengthwise. So as you can see, the JK beats the Dana 44 in everything. And not only beats it, but beats it by a fairly wide margin. Now, the other thing it beats it in is when you're looking at, as I move this out of the way and flip these over, Okay, look at the difference in size of your ring gear bolts. So on the standard Dana 44 low pinion, this is your normal bolt. This is 3 8 okay? And again, for most guys, this is going to be just fine. But on your standard JK, and this is a factory takeout gear set from a JK Rubicon, that's a half-inch bolt. And I'll put them side to side so you can really see... That is incredibly different. Now, when you're torquing this one down, your standard 44, it calls for 55 foot-pounds. When you're torquing this one down, I believe it calls for 130 or 135 foot-pounds. Now, what's kind of, what's cool now is we can say, okay, obviously the JK 44 ring and pinion is better than the Dana 40, the old style Dana 44. Okay, but what really is cool about this is how much similar, especially when you're talking about the pinion, the JK44 is to the 60, and actually in some ways is better than the 60. So, busted out the Mitutoyo here, so you know I'm not just doing some Chinese crap. Um, obviously, your ring gear is going to be bigger on the 60, right? 
nine and three quarters. This is 8.9 inches. Okay, so obviously the 60 wins on that. But let's just look at both inner journals. Okay, I'm going to measure this out. You guys can see that, 1.626, 1.625, right in inch and five-eighths. Oh, well, look at, would you look at that? 1.626, 1.65, so right in the same ballpark. Wow, that's, that's kind of crazy. Now it's even crazier. Okay, let's measure the upper journal or the outer journal. Well, that's, oh, that's inch and a quarter. Okay. Wait, why? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, my goodness, look at that. There you go. So, as you can see, by the numbers, and I'll try and just stick it over here, obviously the 60 wins in ring gear diameter, but when you look at pinion gear size, and again, both of these are 410s. Both of these are 410s. This pinion gear size is actually, at the teeth, slightly larger, by about 20 thousandths. The ring gear surface, from toe to heel, is the same, or roughly the same again i'm doing it with tape measure but both of these are inch and a half heel to toe okay so okay that's that's roughly the same both journals are roughly inch and five eighths exactly the same yet the jk has a larger journal for the outer pinion bearing so by about 60 thousandths so and the other cool thing, as I take this nut off, is there's your Dana 60 pinion nut. Yep, come on. Well, would you look at that? So it takes the same nut as a Dana 60. Your outer bearing is bigger. I just think that this was a good video for you guys to see exactly what we're talking about when doing this upgrade. So not only when you're comparing a 44 to the JK44 is this a massive upgrade, but now you're talking this is getting in the same ballpark as your 60 stuff. And I think that's very cool to see that now the ability to put these in the older style Dana 44s is getting you into that same ballpark as running tons without having to run one ton axles. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a lot of uh, numbers and a lot of just kind of uh, repetition of going over things, but I think these are cool things out there available to us now uh, that should be being looked into. And like I said, I, I'm going to be offering this now in my differential service to guys that want to upgrade um, internally without, you know, going crazy and upgrading to one tons. I don't think that's quite necessary. I think that is a specific market for guys and there definitely is a market for going to tons, but I don't think, um, it's necessary for everybody. And this gives you the ability to upgrade all that internal part, all those internal parts. Um, and realistically guys, I believe going from, standard 44 stuff to this your price difference is maybe a couple hundred bucks at most it's probably like 300 bucks and when you order this kit from carl and again that's jance engineering go look it up when you order the kit from him to do the j uh the jana k4 kit it comes with timken bearings uh you get inner outer bearings and races you get a new seal you get a yoke, um, and the standard is a 1310. You can upgrade to a 1330 or, I believe, a 1350. Um, but he sells you the entire kit. It's very simple. It gives you the shim that goes behind the pinion race. And I'll show you on this axle what it looks like. And well, I'm just going to compare this real quick. Look at this guy. So there's your standard... 44 gear set and then the cool thing is is this carrier is just a standard 44 carrier it's nothing special it's just a eat knee locker uh you do have to use the high speed one this is 373 and down 
The only kind of weird thing I will say about it is when you get it all done, this is what your seal looks like. You do have to silicone this, and that's as far as the seal goes in where the lip allows. So some of you guys might want to, you know, trim that off, whatnot, but that's how it all sets up. It goes together real easy. And I didn't even have to do any grinding on this housing. Um, it does get a little bit tight up there. Again, you have plenty of clearance. On the bottom, we have plenty of clearance. But, um, yeah, highly recommend this, guys. I think it's a game changer for anybody out there running the older stuff. And I think it gives a new lease on life to the older axles to be able to handle what the guys now are starting to throw at it. So, hopefully you guys found this informative. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I try to get to, you know, any reasonable questions that you guys leave. Like it, subscribe to this channel, share it with people, um, and hopefully I'll be able to do more of these going forward. I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I just try to get this information out there to you guys. Uh, go to my website, simpsonoffroad.net. Um, if you're interested in having me build you a set of axles, um, you can also email me directly, simpsonoffroadllc at gmail.com. If you, you know, have a build in mind that you want to go over and we can start, you know, down that process. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one.